30 years ago, Poland stood frozen in time, streets silent but for the echoes of its communist past, grey and drab buildings lined up like weary soldiers and an economy on its knees, burdened by bureaucracy and scarcity. Shops were often bare, dreams stifled, and the promise of a brighter future felt like a distant dream. Back then, most saw Poland as a country struggling to find its footing with little more to offer than cheap labor. But look at it now. It's transformed drastically into a major technological hub, taking the entire world by storm and surpassing its competitors. Who could have seen that coming? It's as if Poland once down and out has found a new life, charging ahead and eyeing the number one spot in Europe's economy rankings, even aiming to surpass the UK in just a few years. But how did they turn things around? Sure, many countries have faced tough times like Poland did, yet only a few have managed to bounce back without getting lost or overshadowed by bigger players. What did Poland do to rise so vigorously from the ashes? And with all this progress, will Poland keep rising? Or is there a chance it could slide back to the old days? To understand how Poland shot up in the economy charts, we need to dive into its roller coaster history. Surprisingly enough, Poland's challenges didn't begin in the latter half of the 20th century. During World War II, they got the short end of the stick and were the first European country to get hit when both Hitler's Nazi Germany and Stalin's USSR teamed up in 1939. And it wasn't just a territory thing, it was a war that shook up the very fabric of the world order. Now, the war ended in 1945 for most, but Poland, not so lucky. Despite the war ending, Poland's struggle for true independence endured into the 1950s. This conflict left more than scars, it left a void. Before the war, Poland had around 35.1 million people. By 1946, just 23.9 million. That's a loss of about 11.2 million people. Imagine an entire country just wiping out. And it wasn't just people, nearly 40% of the country's stuff, buildings, resources, you name it, was destroyed. As the dust of World War II began to settle, they found themselves under the shadow of yet another giant. The Soviet Union, big, imposing, and, well, Soviet, began calling the shots. And this meant that their economy had to do a complete 180. The country had suffered unimaginable economic blows during the war, and amidst the rubble, Poland's post-war leadership found themselves grappling with another problem, earning the trust of their people. Many people weren't happy about this new communist rule, especially since it felt like the Soviets just replaced the Nazis. Which made sense because as Nazi forces receded, control of Poland was shifted to the Soviet Union, which then passed it on to a puppet government it had installed. And with this transition came a new economic directive, one that favored communism and centralized planning. The agricultural and business sectors underwent dramatic changes. Between 1944 to 1946, the Polish government declared that large land holdings would be nationalized without any compensation. Businesses, farms, everything was getting nationalized, meaning that the state took over. And if you owned a big farm or business, especially with those over 50 employees, tough luck. It was taken, not even a single penny was given in remuneration. You'd think after such a rough war, Poland would get some money from Germany to help rebuild. But with Germany split into East and West, things got messy. Instead of a decent amount, Poland got peanuts from East Germany, and even that was cut down by the Soviets in the name of friendship. No Marshall Plan, no big money to help, just more uphill battles. Poland's path to recovery became even steeper. Moving it to the 1970s, Poland started borrowing big time from the West, promising changes in return. But real change? It never came. The communist leadership hesitated to implement genuine reforms, fearing a departure from their centralized economic model. And so Western aid was reduced, Poland's external debt surged, and living conditions deteriorated. Basic things like food became scarce, and the depressing presence of ration cards and long queues became the daily routine. 
And then came the 80s, with the West putting economic pressure on Poland and the government seeking every dollar they could get. A black market popped up with illicit street corner money changes providing superior rates compared to official banks. Western currencies, particularly the US dollar, turned into an essential economic resource, creating a parallel economy. Want imported stuff better have foreign currency. Everywhere you looked, there were signs of an economy in freefall, like half-built buildings just left standing. Infrastructure projects started in the 1970s were abandoned, leaving cities peppered with incomplete structures. Some of these buildings, like Krakow's Skeletor skyscrapers, stood as stark reminders of economic stagnation. The escalating economic strain prompted many Poles to search for jobs in the West, with a significant portion choosing permanent residence even after the fall of communism in Poland. By the end of the 80s, the government knew things had to change, especially when they tried to shut down the Gdansk shipyard and people didn't have it. But with the ever-watchful eyes of the Soviet Union, transitioning to a non-communist Poland required careful maneuvering. Enter the Solidarity Movement. It grew big, it grew fast, and the government couldn't ignore it. Flash forward to the Gdansk Agreement in 1980, it symbolized a rare moment of triumph for the working class. While it initially focused on workers' rights and the acknowledgement of the Solidarity Trade Union, its implications extended far beyond the shipyards of Gdansk. The very act of negotiation indicated a crack in the communist regime's once unyielding facade. But freedom, that was still a tough road. The 1980s were a time of push and pull. Martial law was imposed in 1981 to keep the Soviets happy and control the solidarity folks. Yet it also underlined the depth of the crisis the regime found itself in. The years that followed saw continued tension, with periods of liberalization followed by crackdowns on dissent. But by the late 80s, as the Soviet hold weakened, things started changing for real. There were talks, there were elections in 1989, and boom, the communists were on their way out. When communism finally crumbled in 1989, Poland emerged tattered and torn, but free. But shaking off communism in 1989 didn't mean things got instantly easy. Yes, freedom came with its own set of challenges. Picture a country that had been through the ringer trying to find its footing in a capitalist world. With virtually no capitalist experience, an economy on the brink of collapse and an average salary that paled in comparison to its western neighbors, Poland seemed like a sleeping giant uncertain of its own strength. They had a ton to learn. Still, Poland didn't let the past define its future. They rolled up their sleeves and went to work. The years that followed saw the country undergo drastic economic reforms under the guidance of Finance Minister Leszek Balcerowicz. While these measures, commonly referred to as the Balcerowicz Plan, were often controversial and painful in the short term, they set Poland on a course for growth. Fast forward 30 years and look at Poland now. From a struggling nation to an example for countries coming out of communism, showing them what's possible. So what was the magic formula that triggered Poland's renaissance? When you're at your lowest, there's really only one direction to head in, right? That's the mindset Poland adopted after shaking off the reins of communism. They realized they needed a new direction, a fresh approach. Enter January 1st, 1990, when Poland bravely embarked on one of the most audacious economic overhauls the world had seen in recent history. The Balcerowicz plan, named after the visionary finance minister Leszek Balcerowicz, was at the forefront of this transformative journey. It had its fans, had its critics, but it definitely stirred the pot, so much so that it earned the title Shock Therapy. And this wasn't just a symbolic title, the market witnessed immediate and profound changes. Think of it like deciding to start a fitness regimen after years of neglecting health. It's challenging, but the rewards are worth it. Poland's aspirations with this plan were vast. Reduce staggering inflation rates, decontrol prices, eliminate shortages, make the Polish currency a force on the global stage, stop bankrolling state enterprises, and open the doors wide to international trade. 
Poland's growth secret wasn't just about one fixed strategy or the grand objectives they managed to achieve. For almost 30 years, they kept adjusting their game plan to the changing times. Every decade brought new challenges and Poland always seemed ready to pivot and adapt. In the 90s, Poland came with huge changes. They decided to swiftly metamorphose its communist roots grounded in centralized planning and state ownership into a flourishing capitalist society. This was a huge task, not just about changing policies, but changing mindsets. And while other countries struggled with the same challenge, Poland seemed to find its way better than most. They watched, learned, and chose to act more thoughtfully. This helped them avoid some big pitfalls like powerful elites taking over or economic crashes. The start of 1990 was a turning point, with the Balcerowicz plan leading the way they moved from a state-controlled economy to one that was market-driven. They tackled big issues from inflation to currency changes. By the time the dust settled a few months later, Poland had astonishingly achieved its primary objectives. However, it wasn't just about the big economic changes. The true strength of the Balcerowicz plan wasn't in rejuvenating the giants, but in sprouting countless entrepreneurial seeds throughout the Polish economy. Take a simple thing like shopping for groceries before you had store attendants serving you. After the reforms, open shelves, checking out products freely, and a whole new shopping vibe emerged. This wasn't just a change in shopping, it was a sign of bigger things happening in the country, an indication of consumer needs being placed at the heart of the business model. The real magic behind Poland's success was the rise of entrepreneurship. While all eyes were on big state-run companies, the real energy was coming from the small businesses that were starting up everywhere. These companies were nimble, understood their customers, and brought something new to the table. While state enterprises were struggling to adapt due to their inherent inflexibility, entrepreneurs were filling market gaps everywhere, offering consumer-desired goods and services previously ignored. Now, they didn't forget about the big state companies. They had challenges for sure. For instance, shipyards under communism made all sorts of ships, but post-reforms, they needed to find their unique selling point in a competitive market. The robust growth of the private sector after 1990 significantly impacted various sectors. Successfully trading businesses ventured into manufacturing, construction, and other service sectors, boosting the economy even further. By 1994, private companies comprised a whopping 45% of non-agricultural employment and contributed massively to Poland's GDP, making Poland a standout in Eastern Europe. So what's the essence of Poland's success story? Spotting opportunities, nurturing a business mindset, and always being ready to change things up. The entrepreneurs in the 90s weren't just running businesses, they were shaping the future of their country. But it didn't end there. As Poland made significant strides in creating a favorable business environment, the country started to witness even more profound changes. Embracing economic reforms, fostering innovation, and building a robust infrastructure, Poland positioned itself as a magnet for both domestic and foreign investment. The start of the 21st century was a particularly critical period, and Poland embraced the global stage, seizing the opportunities that lay before it. The decisive move, joining the European Union in 2004. This wasn't merely a political stamp, it was an economic game-changer. The European market, vast and varied, was now available to Poland without barriers. Suddenly, it was an attractive destination for Western European companies searching for an efficient manufacturing base. The open European market allowed for the free movement of goods and services, making it a breeze for these companies to set up shop in Poland, tapping into a large, affordable pool of workers. Sure, while the lion's share of profits often stayed with these big companies, Poland was savvy enough to carve out a substantial piece for itself, ensuring continued rapid growth. The benefits of EU membership didn't stop at providing a larger market or enticing companies. A core principle of the European Union is wealth redistribution, taking funds from wealthier nations and injecting them into the economies of less affluent member states. This principle was a goldmine for Poland. 
Funds poured into the country and, with typical Polish efficiency, they were utilized to revamp everything from roads to educational institutions. Infrastructure blossomed, universities modernized, and a new Poland emerged from the shadows of its past. However, just riding the wave of cheap labor could be dangerous, and Poland's journey was filled with lessons on avoiding complacency. A common pitfall for rapidly developing economies is the dreaded middle-income trap. Relying solely on cheap labor for growth can be a dead-end street. But Poland, with its knack for reinvention, sidestepped this trap. A decade and a half ago, the country was the go-to for low-skilled, low-cost labor. Flash forward to today and the narrative has flipped. Major global players like Google aren't just heading to Poland for manual labor, they're establishing research and development hubs, tapping into Poland's rich reservoir of engineering talent. At the crux of Poland's success has been its unwavering commitment to reforms, tight fiscal discipline, combined with a level playing field for businesses both local and foreign, created an environment where productivity and growth thrived. The country magnetized foreign direct investment, bolstering its economic trajectory and giving it the resilience to weather global economic storms like the 1998 financial crisis. And diving deeper, a few core reasons emerge that contribute to Poland's robust economic story. The emphasis on education was evident with prestigious technical universities churning out top talent year after year, Poland was gearing up not just to compete, but to lead. The burgeoning tech ecosystem, especially in Warsaw, began to make headlines. The likes of Google and Netflix found it impossible to ignore the allure of setting up in Poland. The country's tech scene was vibrant, teeming with over 3,000 startups and backed by more than 100 incubators and accelerators. By the 2020s, Poland's IT prowess was undeniable, contributing a significant chunk to the nation's GDP. The country wasn't just competing, it was leading, especially within Central and Eastern Europe. With IT services nearing 10 billion euros, Poland was on an upward trajectory that seemed unstoppable. All these factors made it clear Poland's growth was not just on paper, it was felt by its citizens. Wages increased, inequality remained low, and there was a tangible sense of progress in the air. But Poland isn't just looking at economic ambitions, there's another domain where the nation has been making waves, its military. You know, when you're nestled between historically aggressive neighbors, you learn a thing or two about the importance of defense. Poland's location sandwiched between Germany and Russia hasn't been the most fortunate. Throughout history, Poland has had to defend itself from invasions and occupations so many times that you lose count. But here's the thing Poland remembers. Every invasion, every occupation, they're all etched in the country's memory. So while some of its European pals were popping champagne bottles celebrating peace, Poland was ramping up its defense mechanisms. And no, it's not just because of historical hang-ups. The Russian invasion of Ukraine was a wake-up call reminding Poland of its vulnerabilities. The nation's response an unprecedented military spending spree. Let's break it down. Poland announced plans to boost its military spending to a whopping 5% of its GDP setting the bar higher than any other NATO member. And they aren't just planning to stockpile ammo, we're talking about doubling the size of its armed forces to an impressive 300,000. And if you thought that was all, they're also shopping for tanks, fighter jets, and other cutting-edge military equipment. By the end of the decade, Poland's aiming for the top spot with the mightiest ground forces in Europe. And honestly, it's shaping up to be one of the most ambitious military buildups Europe has seen in recent times. The specifics? Oh, they're noteworthy. Poland's shopping list includes 250 American M1A2 Abrams tanks, 500 HIMARS, that's a type of rocket artillery for those of us who aren't military buffs, and a cool 96 Apache attack helicopters. So in layman's terms, Poland isn't playing around. With an eye on regional stability, the country is gearing up to not only protect its own borders, but also to play a pivotal role in ensuring Europe sleeps soundly at night. But let's not forget the numbers, they're pretty interesting. 
Currently, Poland's military expenditure stands at 2.4% of its GDP. That's above the EU average and third only to the US and Greece in NATO. They plan to push this even further, aiming for 4% next year, making them the big spender of both the EU and NATO. Now, while it's super impressive and we're all for a country ensuring its safety, it's essential to remember that every coin has two sides. So before we get lost in awe of Poland's growth and military aspirations, let's pivot and explore some potential challenges that might lurk in the shadows for Poland. Stepping back and gazing at the bigger picture, it's clear that Poland's journey, while marked by remarkable achievements, isn't without its hurdles. The country is walking on a tightrope and every move, no matter how strategic, comes with its share of challenges. One prominent speed bump, Poland's significant dependence on foreign investments. Now, don't get me wrong, foreign investment can be a huge boon for any nation. They pour in money, create jobs, and even elevate a country's global profile. We've even seen global tech powerhouses opening their centers in Warsaw. It's a vote of confidence, a testament to Poland's growing appeal. But here's the catch. These tech centers, as glamorous as they are, have names like Google and Microsoft shining on their signboards, not Polish ones. This means that while jobs are being created and the economy is buzzing, the thick slice of the profit pie isn't staying in Poland, it's jetting off abroad. The challenge here, Poland needs its own tech giants, its own success stories that not only earn big but spend big within the country. You see, relying on foreign firms has its ceiling. You can only soar as high as the strings attached to let you. And while that economic conundrum is pressing, there's a deeper, more intricate challenge lurking. Poland's soul-searching. Picture this, two Polands living side by side. One is liberal, progressive, pushing for modern ideas and ideals. The other is conservative, deeply rooted in tradition and religion. It's almost like watching two different movies on the same screen, and the tension between these two visions of Poland isn't just political chatter, it's palpable, evident in conversations over dinner tables and heated debates in town squares. The two camps view each other with suspicion, often unwilling to compromise or see eye to eye. And what's at stake isn't just domestic harmony, there's an external player in this story, the European Union. Recent spats between Poland and the EU over concerns about the rule of law are more than just typical international bickering. There's real money on the line. EU funds, which have been instrumental in Poland's transformation, are now under a cloud of uncertainty. In simple terms, if Poland and the EU can't play nice, the cash flow might just stop. And for a nation that's dreaming big, that's a nightmare scenario. There's also the growing pressure of an aging population to consider, just like what happened in our last video of the consequences of Japan's aging population. If you've not watched it, go check it out, it's linked after this video. An aging population can turn everything Poland has created and story is awe-inspiring yet fraught with complexities. Economic challenges, deep-rooted socio-political divides and environmental concerns all dance in the shadows of this European power house's bright lights. But if there's one thing Poland's history has taught us, it's resilience. As the country navigates these murky waters, it stands as a testament to the age-old adage, who dares wins. Let's watch and see how Poland's next chapter unfolds.